My name is Philip and if you do not have the Irish Giants Causeway on your bucket list just yet, I would strongly suggest to put it there and get going as fast as you can. The landscape is unreal, the stone structures are just out of this world. I really recommend you have a look at that place whenever you get a chance to pop over to our nice island. Now today we're going to talk about how to edit your landscape images and in this particular case I'm going to show you how I went from this original image to that final result using mainly two softwares which are called Aurora HDR 2018 as well as Photoshop. The reason why we use two softwares is that the original baseline image is an HDR image, meaning I combine three different exposures just to get the, the nice sky, to get the nice foreground, so that everything is equally nice exposed and then I pop that image into Photoshop to do the final adjustments like adding the colors and all these kind of different things. Now you do not have to have Aurora HDR, you can use any other HDR software that's out there, you could even do it in Lightroom or in Photoshop itself, just because I'm a really really big fan of Aurora HDR, I'm going to use this one for that particular tutorial. But the settings you could theoretically apply in any HDR software. So let's get going in Aurora HDR, let's jump right in and then do that. Alright guys, let's get going in Aurora HDR 2018. Now the first thing I did was obviously taking my three exposures, the minus two exposure, the zero exposure, as well as the plus plus two exposure, and just drag and drop them into Aurora HDR. Now once I did that, I had the choice to actually choose a preset. And in this particular case, I went for the landscape realistic preset, which you can find at the bottom once you open Aurora. Now, I'm doing this just because in this particular instance, I don't have to do every single adjustment by myself if I know a preset gets me a certain part of the way, right? And I'm generally lazy, I wanna speed up things as fast as possible, but when you're learning, have a look at the settings themselves just to figure out what's going on here. So let's have a look. If once I have applied that preset, the landscape realistic, what does it actually do to the image? Now in this particular case, it's gonna increase the HDR enhance, which in other words, is nothing else than clarity that you have in Lightroom or clarity that you have in Photoshop. So if if I were to increase that like mad, you see the image becomes way more contrasty than if I would not apply that. Now, what it also did, it increased the shadows so that we can see the foreground very well, but it also decreased the highlights a little bit just to make sure the image is nicely balanced out. The next thing that happened was a little bit of saturation increase. So if I decrease that, I have a black and white image, but in our case, we want to go a little bit higher just to make that colors at least a little bit pop. We make that like crazy later in Photoshop anyway, but for now, ever so slightly. Now, the next thing the preset did was to increase what is called the HDR structure. And in this case, if I were to decrease that like to nothing, right, and then increase it like crazy again, you can see the image becomes way more contrasty than it has been before. Okay, so just leave that so ever so slightly at like 12 or something like that. And I think actually for this particular step, there was just one more thing that happened, which is at the bottom here. So what the software did was to decrease the brightness or the exposure rather in the sky area, so right here, but it increased the brightness in the bottom area. So if I go to the bottom ever so slightly, very minor adjustments, but that's what I started out with once I clicked on the landscape realistic preset. Now the cool thing about Aurora HDR is that you can actually have layers and I love it. So what I did next was I just added another layer and now I can actually remove the presets because we don't need to see them anymore all the time. Now I like to have many layers. If you are a person of few layers, please don't, don't be like me. Don't like spam your, your little working area with tons of layers. It's just the way I function in the way I edit. Now what I did in this one single layer is I simply increased the vibrance ever so slightly just to make those colors a bit more, well, vibrant, right? And then I also applied a little bit of HDR denoise. 
Um, it can happen every now and again that when you merge the three base images to create your HDR image, you're going to get a little bit of noise. And in this case, the Aurora HDR denoise is actually quite amazing. So just a little bit, just to get rid of some noise that might have been produced on the way. And there's definitely no loss to sharpness, so I'm quite happy with that. Okay, let's jump to the next layer. And you can see the very second I click on it that the whole image becomes more, well, more of a contrasty feeling. So let's have a look at what I did here. The only thing I did do is, where is it, where did you go? Where did you go? Here it is, the top and bottom tuning. So what you can do here is you set an orientation. So you can set like a middle line, just like in Lightroom. And you can decide what you want to do with either half, sky or foreground. So in my case, I went for a little bit more contrast in the sky, as you can see here. And I also added a little bit of warmth. So you can see if I were to increase that to infinity, I have a really super yellowy summerish kind of sky. But in my case, something like 15 was more than sufficient. Let's go with math 14 whatever that's fine for the bottom area I chose a little bit more contrast as well and I also increased the vibrance a little bit just to get that going so if I decrease that down I just like to have this tiny bit extra contrast which you can especially see at the edges of the image so let's go with something like ah, something like 19 that's totally cool cool and once we have that the very last thing that happened and if I select that you'll see it's only a little bit more contrast in the sky Okay, so that's literally the only thing I did. So if we have a look at the complete zero exposure, like the middle image, and then what came out after the HDR processing, I was already quite happy with it. It is a little bit bright in the foreground, but that's exactly what we're gonna fix now in post in Photoshop. So let's jump right over into Photoshop and fix that image up in the fix words. Fix that image up in no time at all and add a nice sunset color on the top left hand corner. And we're over in Photoshop. Now, in Photoshop, I like to do the things that require some more manual work, right? So everything where I have to brush stuff in like crazy, I'd like to do that in Photoshop. And also, of course, Photoshop is my go-to software because it's very relaxing to work with it, at least for me. So in this particular case, we have a couple of um, options or a couple of things that we have to do. I need to darken the foreground a little bit because it's a bit too bright for my taste. And I also want to add some really, really nice orange light to the top left-hand corner just right up here, just to kind of bring out that sunset that was definitely there because I, you know, I remember that. Uh, just to bring that out and actually show that in the image. So the first thing I'm going to do is probably going to darken down the image on the edges a little bit, just to get a better feeling later once I actually work on the sunset to make sure I'm, you know, not overdoing or underdoing things. Um, so let's just do that. First thing I'm going to do is create a curve adjustment layer. I'm just going to bring it down. And I'm going to bring it down to something like this. Once I have that, because now everything is super dark, which is kind of cool, but not really what we want to do. So I'm going to hit Command and I on the keyboard to invert that layer. And now I'm going to start brushing in wherever I need to have the darkened edge. So I'm going to choose a very nice large brush with an opacity and 20%. You might also want to choose a flow of like 40%. But for me, for now, I'm just going to be a bit faster if I just do it like that. Probably should also choose a white brush that's going to help. And I'm just going to bring out or bring in better that darkness a little bit on the edges of that image. Just a little bit, just maybe something like that is not bad. Cool, let's have a look at the before and after. Yeah, I like that. It kind of centers the image a bit more around this particular area, which is definitely where I want to direct the view to. I mean, just look at these stone structures. It's insane. I don't even, I still don't understand how it is. Ah, okay, I have to stop worrying or asking myself how this came to be. Now, the, the lighting situation or the light situation right now is not bad. So I'm going to try right now to add that particular color into the sky to create my sunset. So what I'm going to do is first create a new layer by hitting Command or Control on the Windows, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard. So now I have a new layer and then I'm going to hit Shift and Backspace to be able to fill it with something. And actually, no, we don't want to fill it with black or white. No, different. We're going to hit G on the keyboard that brings up our paint bucket tool. And I'm just going to fill that layer with a really, really nice orange, something like that. Isn't it beautiful? That's just elevating the quality of our image so much. Just kidding. Now we're going to change the blend mode of that layer from normal down to soft light. And once we have soft light, it's still going to look super weird. Absolutely and hundred percent. So we're going to have to make sure we only have that effect visible where we want it, which is in the top left hand corner and not anywhere else. 
Also, right now, this particular orange is everywhere, right? And it's like really strong. So let's let's bring that down a little bit by making the orange blend a little bit nicer into our image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this particular layer with the orange. And I'm going to use the blend if function of Photoshop. And I love that because here you can specify where we want to show that particular layer depending on the brightness levels of the layers under it, which is kind of cool. So I want to make sure, first of all, I don't have this orange in the very dark parts of the image. So I can just hold my alt key click on the little the little thingy on the left hand side split it in half and drag it all over to the other side and that's just gonna make it uh, so that it's kind of nicely not shown in the very dark areas but it's very fuzzy and sort of feathering out towards the brighter areas which is kind of nice now I'm also going to take the bright areas and make it so that it doesn't show up in the super bright areas maybe to something like this is not bad perfect once I have that I'm gonna hit the OK button because that's what I want to do for now and I'm quite happy with it Cool, let's darken down that scene a little bit more. So I'm going to choose a curve adjustment layer. And if you have watched my tutorials before, you know I'm a man of many layers, as I mentioned before. So don't worry, you can do these things and may probably be more efficient than I'm doing them. But for me, that's totally fine, I don't mind. And I think that's not too bad. So let's keep it like that and let's increase that color that we have just added just a little bit. So we're going to grab a hue saturation layer and I'm just going to increase the saturation until I have the feeling the colors in the top left are good. So I'm going to go probably with something like, I mean, we could go mad, mad, even like this, but I think something like around here is not bad at all. Cool. So I'm going to close that down and have a look at the total overall before and after before I continue, just to make sure I kind of like it up to that point. Yep, and I'm not, that's not too bad at all. So I kind of like the colors that we get back here. Now, I don't want this everywhere because on the stones, it kind of, nah, it just looks like dirt, right? So like yellow dirt. So let's put all these layers that belong to the color into a separate group. So I'm going to take the first layer that belongs to the color and then the color itself, hit the shift key and select it. And now I can hit command or on the Windows computer control and G for group. Now I could name it, I never do because I'm unorganized. But if I switch it on and off, you can see now we just take that color that we have added out of the image. So let's pop a layer mask on that, invert that layer mask with Commander Control I on the keyboard. And now with a nice brush of 20% whiteness, <laughs> uh, we're going to paint the effect in or the colors in wherever we want. So I'm just going to bring that in maybe a little bit like here. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, just like that. We could give it a try to see how it looks if we added a lot more on the water, maybe something like that. Okay, that's not bad. Make sure it's up here very strong. And I think it's kind of nice to have this to have this sort of color concentration on the top left. And then as we can fade it out towards darker blues on the right hand side. And uh, I think that's going to look good. I mean, at least it doesn't in the final image that I did the first time. So let's just hope it does today as well. Let's bring that in into the front a little bit as well. Maybe just something like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, ever so slightly. Like the process of painting normally takes a while. I'm doing it quick and dirty here. Keep that in mind. You want to take your time when you do these kind of things. Awesome. So if you have a look at the total before and after, I think that's a really nice lighting effect that we have created up there and I definitely like it. Awesome. Now there are just a couple of things left we have to do. First, I need to darken down the water just a little bit and also the right hand side of that sky a little bit. So we can probably do that in one go. Let's grab a curve adjustment layer and bring it down to maybe something like this. Once I have that, I'm going to invert it just like before and using a white brush of like 20% or whatever, I'm just going to bring that into the image where I think a little bit more darkness is needed. So I'm just going to paint that in here on the sides over there. Yeah, I think that's going to make a good difference to our image. And also, I think I'm going to go for more darkness here in the foreground of the Giant's Causeway stones there. It's going to help a little bit. Cool. So let's bring a little bit of that darkness also in on the sky right here. So let's zoom in a little bit more, maybe something like that. And just bring in a little bit of that darkness, even maybe in this particular cloud. It looks super dramatic. I'm a big fan of dramatic. <laughs> cool. If we leave it like that, I don't think that's bad at all. Nice. So we can now decide if we want to bring out these colors even further if we wanted to. As an example, we could go in and create another hue saturation layer. We could increase the saturation to see if that is what we feel like doing. We could even change the hue to see if a little bit more red would maybe look a little bit nicer. So I think maybe we go for something like that. Again, with Command and I, I'm going to hide the adjustment I've just created and I just paint it in to the areas where I want to have a little bit more red, just to change things up a little bit, right? Cool. Just like that. That's not bad at all. Awesome. I'm liking that. I'm liking this a lot. 
just for the sake of trying, let's create a soft Orton effect. So I'm going to go ahead and create a what is called stamp visible. That means any adjustment or everything that is currently visible will be on a separate layer. For that, I'm going to hit command or control, alt, shift and E on my keyboard. Now I have this particular stamp visible as a layer right here. And now I can go and change, first of all, the blend mode to soft light and then pop a nice Gaussian blur on it. Just whatever we feel like looks kind of good. So let's go maybe with a blur of maybe something like this is kind of nice. Now what that does is going to intensify the colors in the sky, first of all, a lot, right? But it's also going to give a nice feeling, a sort of a bit more rough and dark and contrasty feeling to the water. So I'm digging this. I don't like it on the top right, so we're just not going to pop it there. But let's create a layer mask, invert the layer mask and use a brush as usual <laughs> and paint that in where we feel it would give a good benefit to the image. So I'm just going to bring it in a little bit, not too much. Wherever I think it's going to look good, let's say the edge here, maybe even a little bit inwards right here. Yeah, I think that's cool. I'm liking this. Awesome. Now, that is theoretically all that we have to do to create this kind of image. And if you think about it, within a couple of moments, we went from a, well, I mean, it's still a good image, definitely. It's a bit too bright and the colors are, mm, but we added our own touch to the particular image and made sure that there is a, what we could consider a sunset on the top left hand corner with a nice sort of water that's quite contrasty, colorful, and still having all these stone structures visible. Now, if we felt like we could force the attention a little bit more on the stones right here, by just simply creating another curve adjustment layer and increasing the brightness just a little bit. Maybe maybe something like this. Uh, let's just, don't just increase the, the bright, maybe, yeah, that is, that is good, that's better. So let's invert that, use a brush again, and just paint that in here in the areas where all the stones are, just to divert attention of the eye to this area as well, okay? And theoretically, you could darken down the particular water on this side a little bit more, just to even intensify that diversion of the eye uh, to the stones. But, well, whatever you fancy. I think I'm quite good with this particular thing here. Actually, now that I see it, you see there is this orange sort of whatever it might be on the stones. And this is going to taking away or this is taken away from the colors that we have inserted in the sky. So quick fix, hue saturation layer, saturation down, invert that and just paint the saturation that is a little bit too crazy here on the sides with this orange. Just paint it away a little bit. We don't want to eradicate it because it's still part of our image. But in this case, I'm just going to have it a little bit less crazy. And just for the sake of trying, I want to go to our blue channel and bring down the blues a little bit just to see how that looks ever so slightly. But in this case, it's actually going to make it more green and I don't like that too much. No, I think we're good from here. And I think we're going to leave it exactly where we are because I do like the colors and I do like what we did there with the foreground. Keep in mind it's a fast edit. As I said, take your time with whatever you're doing. Maybe blend this a little bit better between the hot area and the cold area. But hey, that's completely up to you. Photoshop can be your playground as much as it's mine. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like the video. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe as it's gonna help me out a lot. I shall see you in the next tutorial, which comes out every single week, at least one or two tutorials. And yeah, I'll see you then. Happy shooting until then and have a good one. Bye.